Father, we thank you and we thank God for the missionaries last week, Dan and Lindy, for what they have to share with us. It was very encouraging and refreshing. Amen? Amen. But two weeks ago, we dealt with the whole issue of servant leadership. Servant leadership, just like our master, that Jesus was called to be a servant leader. And so we have been called to be servant leaders. Because Jesus says that the greatest among you shall be your what? Your servant. The greatest among you shall be your servant. And he also says that he, will, he or she who desires to be great or to be first or to be a leader must do what? Serve. That is the prerequisite for greatness. If you want to be great, you have to serve. Because great leaders are great servants. Can you repeat after me? Great leaders, because the only way of setting an example is by demonstrating an example. And that is what Jesus did when he stooped down and he took a towel and washed the feet of his disciples, giving them an example to follow. Remember, he who was the greatest became their Seven. Amen. I think you agree with me that leadership crisis erupts when people who have not learned to obey instructions are given the privilege to give commands. Will you agree with me on that one? Because a person who is not a good servant can never become a good leader. If you are not a good follower, you can never become a good leader. Amen, somebody? Are you following me? Amen, somebody. And so to me, the pinnacle of fulfillment in my spirit and in my soul is one day when I'll see the Lord face to face and I'll hear those words, thou good and faithful. That's what I want to hear. That's all. I don't want to hear anything else. Thou good and faithful, not leader, servant. Amen. And this morning, I'm going to continue in that realm, but only we are going to move in a different direction. And I'm going to talk about the portrait of a servant. Say it with me. The portrait, can you put it on, please? The portrait, portrait as in a picture of a servant. So turn your Bible, please, to the book of Mark, chapter 10 and verse 45. Let's read it together, please. For even the Son of Man... Let's read it again. For even the Son of Man. You may sit down, please. Now, I want you to notice the word even. I'm not an English scholar. I try to be, <laughs> really. But when somebody tried to insert the word even, even is spoken sometimes in comparison of something. So just you think that you don't have to be servant. The Bible says that even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Ladies and gentlemen, he came simply to serve and to give his life a ransom for many, signifying that the true character of ministry is that of a servant heart. Will you agree with me? Because it is in serving others that we serve the Lord. Jesus says that in as much as you do it for one of the least, you've done it for me. Amen. Now, what do you want to be when you grow up? That is the favorite question we normally ask our children. In fact, we enjoy asking them, what do you want to be? when you grow up. And the answer we usually get is that when I grow up, I would like to be a teacher. As some will say, I would like to be a nurse. Others will tell you, I would like to be a homemaker. At least we don't do that anymore. I mean, to be a full-time housewife. At this time, we need two income to make things work okay. In the 60s, they, they, they used to do that. 
uh, now uh, no more. Uh, amen. <laughs> amen. But some will tell you, I'd like to be maybe a, a fireman or a police officer or an army officer. And if you have some kids who are very visionary, their answer will be, I'd like to be a movie star or a pop star or a mathematician or a scientist. And if you are blessed, they would like to tell you, well, I would like to be a professional footballer. <laughs> Amen, somebody. <laughs> I'm praying that God will send one of those kids here that they'll pay our building off. <laughs> Hallelujah. But ladies and gentlemen, if you should ask Jesus 2,000 years ago when he was growing up in downtown Bethlehem, that Jesus, what will you like to be when you grow up? What do you think he will say? I would like to be a, a servant. Amen, somebody. And so let's take the same question and ask it another way. Let's imagine asking Jesus what he wants us to be when we grow up. Are you following me so far? I honestly believe that he will give the same answer to everyone. And that is that I would like you to be different. In fact, I would like you to be a Servants. Amen, somebody. You see, in all my life, I cannot recall anybody saying that when he or she grew up, they would like to be a servant. Why? Because the word servant sounds very lowly. It sounds very humiliating and sometimes it's lacking in dignity. And yet, that is what Jesus came to do. The scripture says that he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom. Amen, somebody. John Witch, the author John Witch, in his helpful book called Honesty, Morality, and Good Conscience, talks about the concept of serving. And he says, and I quote, that Christians are to be servants of both God and people. For that is what Jesus came to do. Will I agree with that? But most of us approach life. We approach work. We approach our businesses. We even approach the spiritual life with the attitude of what I can get rather than what I can give. We approach life with the attitude of what I can take rather than what I can contribute. We approach life with the attitude of what you can do for me instead of what I can do for you. Amen? Now watch me very carefully. The servant heart always ask the question, where am I needed most? What do you want me to do? And what can I do for you? That is the servant attitude. But listen very carefully. I believe that the concept of serving must undergird all that we do, both in the sacred and in the secular, in the church and society, and in the natural and the spiritual. Amen, somebody? Because an employee who serves honestly and diligently uh, in his or her works, first of all, honors God. And secondly, deepens their value to their employer. On the other hand, the self-serving employee will seldom be valued by their employers. Because Jesus says something. That if you are not faithful with the least, the probability is that you will not be faithful with the much. And if you are not faithful to that which belongs to another man, who will give you your own? This is biblical principles, really. If you are not faithful to that which is another man's, who will give you your own? Somebody shout a servant heart. And so ladies and gentlemen, in the gallery of true servant heart, a portrait emerges as of in the picture frames. And it is a portrait of servanthood carefully painted in action that emphasizes the qualities and the character trait that identifies through servants. Amen. Watch this. 
the portrait that must formulate and emerge from the servant is number one, commitment. Somebody say commitment. Number two, consistency. Number three, faithfulness. Number four, constancy. Number five, reliability. And number six, dependability. Because as a servant, you must possess all these characteristics. You must be committed. You must be faithful. You must be consistent. You must be constant. You must be reliable. You must be dependable. Otherwise, you cannot be a true servant of God. Amen, somebody. Now watch this. If you are going to be a true servant of God, you must be committed to the cause. Be committed to the vision. Be committed to the purpose. Be committed to the task. Be committed to the body. Because with commitment comes faithfulness. With faithfulness comes consistency. With consistency comes constancy. With constancy comes reliability. With reliability comes dependability. Amen, somebody. Because if you are not committed, you will not be faithful. And if you are not faithful as a servant, you will not be consistent. And if you are not consistent, you will not be constant. And if you are not constant, you will be unreliable. And if you are unreliable, then you will be undependable. And if you are undependable, we cannot commit anything into your hands. We don't know whether you show up or not. Hi, yow. Are you following me so far? These are the characteristic traits of a servant. A good one. But watch this. These qualities. But these are the qualities that lead to a lifestyle that pleases God. And when pursued, opens the door to inner happiness, it brings great satisfaction and it leads to your breakthrough. Are you looking for a breakthrough? These are the qualities that brings breakthrough in a person's life. Why? Because inside the virtue of commitment, inside the virtue of faithfulness, inside the virtue of constancy, inside the virtue of consistency, inside the virtue of reliability and dependability lies the key to the power of God. Amen, somebody. I said amen, somebody. And so, folks, a close examination of each is therefore essential. And today, I'm going to look at the character trait of commitment. Because the Bible says that commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others. Not to unfaithful men, but to faithful men and women who will be able to teach others. So I'm going to look at the character trait of commitment. Say with me, commitment. And we'll deal with the rest the following weeks. Commitment. Now, Vince Lombardi was an American football player. He became a coach and he began to run the football league. This is what he has to say about the word commitment. He says that most people fail in life not because of lack of desire, but because of what? Commitment. They fail in life not because of lack of desire, but because of lack of commitment. Ladies and gentlemen, without commitment, nothing happens in your life. Without commitment, nothing happens in your relationship. Without committing commitment, your education will go zilt. Nothing happens without commitment. Without commitment, your spiritual life will go nowhere. Hi, No, seriously. Without commitment, nothing happens in a person's life. For commitment is what transforms an idea. Commitment is what transforms a concept into reality. Somebody shout commitment. Without commitment, there will be no breakthrough in your life. You can shout, you can check, you can pray all the prayers, but if you are willing, if you are unwilling, to make the commitment to your responsibility, whether it is in the spiritual or in the natural, you will never see the result of all your endeavors. Somebody shout commitment. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Without commitment, nothing happens. Without commitment. 
if you are looking to be free, with that commitment, nothing happens. If you want to be great with that commitment, nothing happens. If you want to have a good relationship with that commitment, nothing happens. Commitment is the word. Amen, somebody? The story was told. Well, no, it's still being told. About a pig and a chicken. They were walking past a church one Sunday morning. The, the chicken said to the pig, you know, over the years, these people over there, they've been pretty nice to us. And I think we should do something nice for them. Good idea, said the pig. What do you have in mind? I thought we have to have a big banquet uh, for them, said the chicken. I'm all for that, said the pig. What shall we sell them to eat? Bacon and eggs, said the chicken. Not on your life, said the pig, because for you, it is just involvement. For me, it's a total commitment. Amen, <laughs> somebody. Now watch this. The difference between involvement and commitment is like bacon and eggs. The chicken was involved. She comes, lays eggs, and just disappears. But the pig was committed because he gave his life. Amen, somebody. So the answer is this, what is a commitment? Let's define it. What is commitment? Commitment number one is the act of binding and devoting yourself spiritually, emotionally, intellectually to a cause, to an idea, to a belief, or to a body. Commitment. Number two, commitment is a promise to be loyal. Somebody shout loyal. To be loyal to someone or something no matter what. I'm not going to change my friendship with you just because you, just, you messed up. No, you are still my friend before you mess up and you will still be my friend after you mess up. Commitment to the high degree. If my son wake up tomorrow morning and say, Dad, I'm now gay. He doesn't change anything. He's still my son and I love him anyway. Commitment to the high degree. Amen, somebody. If my son or if my daughter to, decided to become a Muslim, it doesn't change anything. God forbid, but it doesn't change anything. Amen? She will still come home and will cook the food without pork. <laughs> Folks, you are talking about commitment of high degree. Amen, somebody. Number three, commitment is the attitude of someone who worked very hard to do and to support something. Number four, commitment is a pledge to fulfill an obligation or obligate ourselves to a cause. Number five, commitment means staying loyal to whatever you said you are going to do long after the mood in which you said it has left you. Commitment. Somebody shout commitment. Now, the synonym of the word commitment is number one, Allegiance, fidelity, constancy, attachment, dedication, devoteness, faithfulness, loyalty, steadfastness, responsibility, resolution, and determination. Amen? The antinom or the opposite of commitment is disloyalty, unfaithfulness, infidelity, and inconstancy. Somebody shout, commitment. Now watch this. Honoring your commitment will impact all dimensions of your life. Because without commitment, you cannot have depth in anything. Can I say that again? Without commitment, you cannot have depth, depth, D-E-P-H-E, in anything. Whether it is in your relationship, it will be shallow. Whether it is your spiritual life, you take a casual. Whether it is your business, you work very hard. Whether it is with your family, well, you'll be a war. Without, without commitment, you cannot have death in anything to be shallow. Amen, somebody. Amen. Somebody shout commitment. commitment. But watch this. Motivation is what gets you started. But commitment is what keeps you going. Amen, somebody. Motivation 
It's what keeps you sturdy. You know, I've heard, how many times I've seen people who go to, uh, to a business something or they become born again. They are all happy, 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 happy. And then give them a few months. And I don't want to know. Motivation gets you started. But commitment is what gets you going and to reach your destination. Without commitment, you go nowhere. Oh, seriously. Without commitment, your spiritual life will go nowhere. Without commitment, your educational life will go nowhere. You need, you can have all the Holy Ghost. You can have all the angelic beings. Without commitment, forget it. Oh, yes, somebody. I said, amen. Now watch this. Individual commitment to a group is what makes the group work. It's what makes the business work. It's what makes the church, without your commitment, the church does not work. Can I say that again? Without your commitment, the church will not work. Society will not work. Without our commitment to obey the laws of the land, the land will not work. Commitment is the word. Amen. Because productivity is always the result of a commitment to excellence, to planning, to intelligence, and to focus efforts. Somebody says commitment. Hallelujah. I've met people who are full of the Holy Ghost, but they are the most unfaithful, uncommitted, unreliable people I've ever known. And yet they are the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, seriously. They have the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is supposed to lead you through all these things. But for one reason, it doesn't work. Commitment. Commitment is the word. Are you following me so far? Now, com commitment is about committing to God all our lives. Not just the ones I feel like. Because commitment isn't about what I can get out of it. It's about what God expects of me. Can I say that again? Commitment is not how I feel or what I can get out of it. But it is what Jesus expects of me. Because for many Christians, commitment is all about convenience. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. And so they are commitment committed as long as it works for them. They are committed as long as it doesn't cost them anything. They are committed as long as it is safe and there's no risk involved and there's no rejection and there is no pain and there's no criticism and there's no sacrifice. They are committed. Convenience. Convenience. Do you still love me? Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. But ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the word commitment or the concept of it, there are only two options. How many? And here is it. You are either committed or you are not. There's no middle ground. You are either in or you are out. There is no in between. And today, many are unwilling to totally be committed to the Lord because it costs too much. It will cost you something. Amen, somebody? This shallowness and all this, it sometimes really annoys me. If you are committed, be committed. First class. Amen, somebody? In 1976, Summer Olympics, Japanese athlete named Shan Fujimoto was in the gymnastic team. But a week before their session, he broke his leg. Now, what will you do? A week before, he was part of a team. But a week before the gymnastic event, he broke his leg. What will you do? Hmm. The injury did not stop him. Because the following week, he came and he competed in the event with a broken leg and nobody knew anything. And when he landed, you know those ring pain, the one day, and then he landed and the camera zoomed at his face with the pain. Later on, he was interviewed. Why did you do that? Because I don't want to let the team down. Some of us, just a small, you will see them in church. 
looks it seriously. Seriously. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Here we, we have someone who was truly committed to his sport, committed to his country, and he played hurt. Hurt. He played hurt. Amen. And we got to learn how to play hurt. You watch some of these American footballers. You know, they've got plaster on their fingers, and they are still playing. You watch these uh, footballers. They've got a long something, plaster of Paris, and they are still playing. They are playing hurt. Come to the church. And people can play hurt. A little bit of me, I'm, I'm, I'm offended. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Here were people playing hurt, suffering, and yet because of the team, they are playing hurt. Amen, somebody. I said, amen, somebody. So committed was this man that he would not let anything stop him. And by your, uh, 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 by the way, the uh, Japanese won the gold medal because this guy was part of it. Amen, somebody. I said, amen. Now, we need that kind of commitment in the house of God. Amen? You know, sometimes I, <laughs> I don't know whether I should say this or not. Let me say it anyway. Oh, somebody called you, Pastor, I can't be in church today because my family have come over. Well, bring them to the church or let them stay home. I mean, come on. Either you are in or you are not. <laughs> I told my mom, if you are traveling, don't book Sunday because I will show up. Don't either book Wednesday because I will not come. Friday, don't even bother. I will not show up. Listen, if you don't treat God nice, what do you expect them? If, if they can get you to get your Sunday off and stay home with them, do you think they will respect your God? No, no I mean, come on. You yourself don't, don't respect your God. And you expect them to? I don't think so. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> huh? No. Because I'm there to lead by example. Amen, somebody. And so let me give you the philosophy of commitment. The philosophy of commitment. The philosophy of commitment. Number one, commitment demands a choice. Say with me. Commitment does what? Say it again. Commitment. And so Jesus tells his followers that either they be committed to him and deny their own desire, or they be determined to go their way and deny him. Amen, somebody? The choice to commit is the same for all. Either we deny ourselves, or we deny him. Either we go his way, or we go our own way. Commitment demands a what? A choice. Number two. Commitment demands action. Say with me. Commitment demands, ladies and gentlemen, commitment cannot be divorced from responsibility. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ruth's words of commitment did not speak as loudly as her action. Amen? You know, I mean, I mean you know the story. When the husbands died, including Naomi and Ophir and Ruth, both Naomi and Ruth committed themselves to follow, sorry, both Oprah and Ruth committed themselves to follow Naomi wherever she goes. And look at what Ruth said. She said in Ruth 1, 16 and 17, and treat me not to leave or to turn back from uh, following after you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will become my people. Your God will become my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. You're talking about Commitment of high quality. Amen. Oprah, on the other hand, was following out of convenience. And when things did not get her away, she forsook her responsibility and walked away from her commitment. Amen, somebody. And how many of you seen people, a little bit of trouble, a little bit of offenses, they just walked away and forsake their commitment. Amen, somebody. I said, hey, amen, somebody. Are you? Now, this will help you. Number three, commitment limits choices. Say with me. Commitment 
First of all, no, and let's go back. Commitment, number one, is what? It demands choice. Number two, commitment demands action. And number three, commitment limits choices because it is exclusive. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, for example, in a commitment to marriage, God's plan is for one man and one woman to commit themselves to each other exclusively and permanently. Is that true? That is why I'm not married to five women. I didn't say that one. I didn't say that one. Amen. That is why I'm not married to five women. I have only one because I'm committed and devoted to that one. That's why I don't go to three churches. I go only one. I'm committed. <laughs> you see all these uh, Christian gypsies. They are not accountable to anybody. They are here, they are there. They are, I mean, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Amen. I'm committed to just one church because I take my commitment too seriously to spread it loosely. Amen. It costs too much. Amen, somebody. Now, write this down. Commitment is the engine that pulls the relationship through ups and downs of everyday living. Somebody shout commitment. Because without commitment, your relationship will not work. Amen, somebody. Number four. Commitment builds up faith and develops character. It is a spiritual discipline requiring time, effort, energy, hard work, persistency, consistency, and determination. Somebody shout commitment. We'll continue next week, but let me conclude by saying this. That you will never know what you could have been if you are committed. You will never know. And so I'm here to charge you this morning. Whatever you are engaging, be committed. Because without commitment, you will see no results. Without commitment, you will think God is a million miles away. Without commitment, your education will go nowhere. Without commitment, you never, you will even never get to know your family. Commitment. You can have the Holy Ghost and shout all you shout or whatever. Without commitment, you go nowhere. All that we'll be hearing is noise. And for those of you who are in recovery, you need commitment to stay the course. Without commitment, you never get anywhere. Without, without commitment. Nothing happens without commitment. Amen, somebody. I said amen, somebody. Amen. To be continued next week. Let's turn to our feet. Amen. amen. Let's turn to our feet, please. Hallelujah.